This morning we'll be reviewing the Augustan Bible, English Standard Version Catholic Edition. It's um, published by the Augustan Institute, and it comes in this attractive cloth overboard, rather sturdy, uh, rough surfaced slipcase to snug fit. Here's the book itself. To give you a sense for size, I have here the um, Revised Standard Version First Catholic Edition, which, like the book we're, we're, we are reviewing today, is a sewn paperback. And you can see that the Augustan Bible, the ESV CE, is a bit larger than the RSV First Catholic Edition. And here it is compared to the RSV Second Catholic Edition. Both of these RSVs are from Ignatius Press. A little shorter than the RSV. Second edition, about the same width. A little bit thicker. Same contents in all three of these Bibles, essentially. This book is 9 and 1 16th inches tall, 6 and 1 16th inches wide, and 1 and 1 8th inches thick. As we mentioned, it's a paperback. That's the construction. But if you look, you can definitely see signatures. Definitely a sewn construction. The format is uh, text, no references, in two columns in a paragraph format, except of course poetry is printed as poetry. Each column is 59 millimeters wide, and I count about 48 characters on a tightly packed line with little space and maybe no capitals. There are as many as 53 lines of text on a page, so if we find a column without a break like this, you'll find 53 columns. Page dimensions are 230 millimeters tall, 151 millimeters wide, so in English units that's 9.06 inches tall, 5.94 inches wide. The print, where it's dark, is reasonably dark, but it tends to fade in this, and we'll talk about that later. It's a nice crisp font where it's printed boldly. The text is not line matched. I'll attempt to show you that. Just pick a page at random here. I'll zoom in. Turn this lamp off. So you can see the other page a little better, and you can see that the lines are definitely offset. Right, let me just get one page, that'll do better. And so you can see the print is offset here, here. You can see the print between the lines there. So, not line match text. The paper is reasonably opaque though, so I don't think that's a major issue. Let me zoom you back out margins at the top of the page, from the top of the text, top of a capital to the edge, 16 to 18 millimeters, at the bottom, from the bottom of a descender on the bottom line of text. So this margin includes whatever notes you have at the bottom of the page, is 14 to 16 millimeters. The inner margin is nice, it's 15 millimeters wide, so we have less of a problem of the text going into to the gutter as we would if the margin were more narrow, outer margin is 10 to 11 millimeters. The font in the text is uh, for the capital letters, say the capital P in Pilot here, is about eight and a half points when I compare it to Times New Roman. The lowercase are about 10 points. That's pretty typical for a Bible font. Um, the line spacing, line height is 3.74 millimeters. That uh, is 10.6 inches, 10.6 inches, 10.6 points. So that's really quite good for a font that's about 10 points times New Roman. As you see, the verse numbers are within the paragraphs, very easy to find. There are no italic fonts or special fonts for words that the translators add to smooth the reading. The Old Testament quotations in the New Testament are not in a special font. They are often in quotation marks, uh, like here. 
but often they are not uh, offset, I mean. They're always in quotation marks, but they're often not offset. Um, revised Standard Version and the English Standard Version, which is its immediate descendant, uh, do not use capital letters for the pronouns of deity, so here this refers to Jesus, but it's not capitalized. We mentioned already that there are no references, so you see no center column references, no page bottom references, except for the source of quotations and for parallel passages, such as there. Page bottom uh, text and translation notes that we're looking at here are in a font that's about six and a half points. They are easy to read from the text to the page bottom, but not easy to read from the page bottom up to the text because they do not indicate the verse number that the reference is made to. I like the paper. The paper has a sheet thickness of about 40.6 microns. Uh, there's only a slight sheen that you see there, not very much at all. I estimated the paper weight at 37 GSM. Uh, it's advertised as 36 GSM. It actually calls itself 24 number thin opaque. And if you look that up, you'll find that's a 36 GSM paper. So the surface is nearly matte. Co color is very close to white. It has a very slight beige tinge. There is noticeable show through, as you can see here, but I don't find it disturbing. Uh, print non-uniformity is an issue. This book is printed in Italy. Um, where it's printed well, it's printed well, but it does fade. So look at a few, we'll look at a couple of examples. So here, see how darkly page 280 is printed. Compare that with 281 and then 282. So look how light 282 is, and we'll compare 282 with 280. So you see quite a range of variation, much darker on the left than on the right. If we go to the New Testament, we see the same sort of thing quite frequently in the Gospels. Um, 992 on the left in Matthew, much darker than 993 on the right. I think if there's a major flaw with this edition, that is it. There are no book introductions. You come to the New Testament here, you're immediately in Matthew, no book introduction. The um, book titles are in the outside top where they should be. Page contents are given here, so the last verse to begin on the right hand page is Matthew 5-7. The first full verse on the left-hand page is Matthew 2.9, so that makes it very easy to navigate. Page numbers are top center. You generally don't need the page numbers that much. You need the book title much more frequently, so it's better to have that on the outside. There are headings in the text. As you see here, they're in a bold italic font. Font size is the same as the size in the text. It's about 9.5 points. Quotations from the Old Testament, as we said, are sometimes indented, sometimes not. There are some indented examples. Chapter numbers are large and bold. They span about two lines of text. And um, the books of the Bible do begin on a separate page. You may be wonder, wonder why I talk about that. But for some people, it's very important that... Uh, books of the Bible begin on a separate page. I'm not altogether sure why. It does waste some uh, paper, but it also gives you room to write. And as you see here, all these smaller books at the end of the New Testament begin on a separate page. So the book, I guess, feels more open. There's less chance that you'll have a sense of claustrophobia if each book begins on a separate page. There is at the end of the Apocalypse. We have to get to the end of the Apocalypse to show you. Okay, almost there. A table of weights and measures, followed by six blank sheets, 12 blank pages, 
of notes. And the best way to write on these, I think, since they're unlined, is to slip a page, paper, paste, a page of a lined paper or graph paper underneath it when you write on it. That works pretty well for me. So after those 12 pages, you have eight uh, nicely printed, nice colored combinations here. Rather low detailed maps on a glossy, heavier paper. At the end of the book, none of the maps uh, goes into the gutter, so they're all free of the gutter. You don't have to try to find any locations down in the gutter. Uh, you can see the binding here. Can you? Yes, you can. It's hard to, but you can see the threads in the gutter here. A little tricky to see them, but it is definitely sewn here. Um, after the maps, no concordance, no map index. You have one, two heavy pages, and then you have the cover, which again is this double folded paperback with a very nice, nicely designed uh, illustration on the cover with an open Bible, tree branches, it says ESV on the spine. Um, you may have noticed there are no headbands, no tail bands, there is no ribbon marker. Um, the book does lie open and fairly flat in Genesis. In Genesis 30, we'll go try to go to the beginning of Genesis. I did break it in, but it didn't seem to really need it. So you see the page left page lifts a bit, but Genesis is open and you can see right down there into the gutter pretty easily. No issues, you can see the text there. If you go to the center of the book, well, the poetic sections are going to keep the text out of the gutter a little better than others would. But as you can see, it seems fairly f nicely separated from the gutter here in the center. Here, very, very uh, well removed. You do have a bit of a slope here, but it's easy to deal with that to read on a flat surface just by lifting the other side. So I think all that's quite well done. At the beginning of the book, you see a half title page. You have the similar two pages of heavy paper at the beginning, then the half title. The copyright page comes after the full title. So here's a page about the Augustan Bible. Some people say Augustine, I say Augustine. So you can freeze that and read that if you like. It's the full title page, ESV Catholic Edition with the Deuterocanonical books. Interesting little emblem here for the Augustine Institute. Copyright page has the Nile Obstat and the Imprimatur from India. There's the ISBN. I meant to show that to you as well. I have it here on the uh, little piece of writing that uh, I'll give it to you right side up. The, uh, this was attached to the plastic wrapping. Here we have the contents, all the Old Testament with the Deuterocanonical books interleaved in their correct Catholic order, the New Testament, and we've seen the table of weights and measures and the illustrations and maps. Then in alphabetical order. And a foreword to the ESV Catholic edition that essentially encourages you to read the Bible by giving you quotes from the Second Vatican Council, Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Francis, 
words of gratitude and then um, essentially endorsements by a bishop of Sibin Gangai and the Archbishop of Bombay. Preface to the ESV, this is the normal preface, it talks about how it's a revision of the Revised Standard Version. They started with the 1971 Revised Standard Version text. They are essentially literal, so they try to be word for word literal, and it is a bit more literal than the Revised Standard Version. They explain why they translate certain words the way they do, like doulos and slave or bond slave, bond servant. Introduction to the ESV Catholic Edition, which I think you'll want to read if you decide to buy this. But you can freeze this. I think you'll be able to read it if I hold it close enough for you. basis, text format, and the end. And we have the Old Testament intro page, and we're in Genesis. So here's a close-up look at the font. Um, we mentioned the line spacing is generous, and I do like that quite a lot. It makes it quite easy on the eye. The column's not too wide. The um, tracking is a bit tight as it often is in uh, the English Standard Version. Look how close the E and the J and the O and the I are there and rejoice. Uh, the F, E, A, S, T, and feast. That happens uh, from time to time. Letter, uh, word spacing is quite good here. I have found a place or two where the words seem to run almost uh, into each other, almost without break, but here it's very good. Now, uh, as a first example for comparison, I'll bring in the Ignatius Press RSV First Catholic Edition paperback that you saw earlier, the blue one. And so here's the font from that. And so from a point of view of line spacing, the ESVCE is much better than this older RSVCE. Um, I do like the boldness on the one on the left. And it does appear to be a larger font, but the one on the right is uh, perfectly readable. Now on the left, I have brought in the Ignatius Press RSV 2nd Catholic Edition. And of course the most obvious difference is the paper color. You have this um, cream color on the left, which uh, works well with contrast. It's supposed to help with eye strain. Some people don't like it very much, though. I think um, the fonts and the line spacing are quite similar. Perhaps the one on the right is uh, a bit more attractive. I think that's uh, in the eye of the beholder. The principal disadvantage to the RSV 2nd CE, in my mind, is the um, narrow inner margin at the gutter. Text does seem to fall into the gutter. And also because of the way it's bound, the hinges are a bit stiff. And now I have the a revised New Jerusalem Bible on the left, which is a more lightly printed text. Similar font size, perhaps a bit larger. Very nice line spacing on the left, but of course single column Bibles need to have more line spacing. I do like uh, the way the one on the right is uh, bolder, at least on this page. Uh, since the ESV CE is based on the 2016 ESV, one a uh, question people may have is whether the controversial passage in Genesis 3.16 is translated in the same way. So you're looking at the 2016 ESV there. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And if you look at the same place in the Catholic edition, you see in fact that it does say the same thing desire shall be contrary to your husband, and she, he shall rule over you. Another question you may have is, uh, how different is the ESV CE to the 2016 ESV? Well, here's one example. In um, Matthew 1, verse 19, 
The SB 2016 edition says resolved to divorce her. If you look at the ESV CE, it says resolved to send her away quietly. In Matthew 10:17, the 2016 ESV says deliver you over to courts. The ESV Second Catholic Edition says deliver you over to councils. And what that uh, difference does is it um, makes Matthew here uh, comport with Mark 13, 9, I believe is the verse, so that it translates the Greek word in the same way. It actually makes the ESV more consistent. In Matthew 12, 40, the 2016 ESV says, in the belly of the great fish, the ESV CE says, in the belly of the great sea creature. So I'm showing you changes that I've found in the New Testament. I haven't, of course, had time to look through the entire Old Testament, nor, in fact, have I looked through the, all of the New Testament. I have looked through, um, compared the two side by side, in everything except Acts, uh, Hebrews, and the first 11 chapters of Revelation. So there may be uh, more changes in those sections. Uh, the next one I wanted to show you was uh, the bracketed note at the beginning of the section, Mark 16, 9 through 20. Some of the earliest manuscripts do not include that. And then the double brackets around the text in the 2016 ESV. If you look at the same spot in the ESV CE, you do not see that note in double in uh, brackets, nor do you see the text double bracketed. The note, however, does appear in the footnote at the end of the book. Some of the earliest manuscripts do not include those verses. Our next example is in Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Um, the 2016 ESV says, Greetings, O favored one. The ESV CE says, Greetings, O highly favored one. And um, John chapter 5 verses 25 and 28, the ESV 2016 says an hour is coming. I could only cho show you one of the two verses the way this uh, particular Bible is formatted, so I chose 28, but they both say an hour. If you look in the um, ESV Catholic edition, it says Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming. And then down again in um, verse 28, the hour is coming. The 2016 ESV has a bracketed note right before the story of the woman caught, caught in adultery. The earliest manuscripts do not include this section. And then it double brackets the text. The ESV CE. Well, here we are at the end of 752 there. Next page begins the section in question, and as you see there is no bracketed note, and the section of text is not bracketed. In uh, John 17, 19, the 2016 ESV says, For their sake I consecrate myself, that they may also that they also may be sanctified in truth. If we look at the same verse in the ESV CE, we see, and for their sake I consecrate myself, that they may be consecrated in truth. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 1, uh, the 2016 ESV says, not, tolerant, not tolerated even among pagans. The ESV CE says, not tolerated even among Gentiles. I think both words are commonly used for the Greek word ethnicin. In um, 1, Cor 1 Corinthians 7, 25, the 2016 ESV says, now concerning the betrothed, if you look at footnote 7, it says Greek virgins. If you look at the ESV, CE, it says, now concerning the virgins. 
And then there's a very similar change in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 34. So those are all the differences I have found. Again, I haven't looked through Acts, Hebrews, or the first 11 chapters of the book of Revelation. There may be other differences as well. There may be differences in footnotes. I didn't look at those. There may be differences in the um, headings. I did not check those. You may also be trying to decide between the ESV CE and the RSV 2 CE, which is what you're looking at here on the stand with the cream colored paper. Um, generally, I would say that the RSV is more poetic than the ESV. The ESV is more of a prosaic translation. It's trying to modernize things. It doesn't use a lot of the vocabulary that the RSV retains or the more um, biblical ways of speaking, more stylistically biblical, historically biblical uh, turns of phrase. Um, I would say also that um, because the ESV tends to be more literal than the RSV, the ESV CE is probably more literal than the RSV 2 CE. But I also want to point out that being literal doesn't necessarily mean being more accurate. Literal, in my mind, just means that you're mapping uh, sourced language words into English words. And in general, the ESV does that better than the RSV does, but not always. And here's an example. If you look at Acts 10.36, um, you know the word which he sent to the sons of Israel. The Greek word sons is in the text. If we compare that with the ESVCE, we see as for the word that he sent to Israel. So they left out sons of, probably in order to um, attempt to be more gender inclusive. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it reads, So we do not lose heart, though our outer man is wasting away. That's the RSV 2 CE. And uh, you can see, looking at the Greek, that in fact it does say outer man. That's our there, our outer man. The uh, ESV CE and the ESV, they say, uh, So we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away. And then, of course, the footnote at the bottom of the page acknowledges that that word that they've translated self is, in fact, man. I mentioned a few minutes ago that the RSV uh, tends to be more poetic and the ESV more prosaic. Um, you see a Greek metaphor here, flesh, in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 29. But if we look at the ESV, they put an explanation in the text. In verse 26, it says worldly standards. But if you look at the footnote 3, footnote 3 reads according to the flesh. And then... 29, no human being. If you look at the footnote here, footnote 3 is Greek according to the flesh, Greek no flesh, which is the way the RSV reads. Another example is in Luke 1, 53, he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. And I've always liked the way that was phrased. But um, the ESV is more interested in making sure you understand what it means. And so it says, the rich he has sent away empty. Now you may be thinking, well, these are small changes. Um, I acknowledge that they are small. I'm just trying to give you a sense for the differences. Uh, John chapter four, verse seven, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. And so what does the ESV have instead of there came? It says, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Here's another small difference in Matthew's Gospel, 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10. Take no gold, nor silver, nor copper in your belts. Um, it may be that the ESV translators thought that nor was too hard to understand. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belt, no bag for your journey or two tunics. 
The way I was taught English, um, this is grammatically incorrect, but uh, things have changed since my day. Here's another curious little difference. This is in John's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, as he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. If you look in the ESV, you'll see that... Here we go. Um, he, they use spit as the past tense of spit. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. So you have spit for spat and saliva for spittle. One other interesting little change that I've noticed is here in 2 Corinthians 8.3 where the RSV 2 CE says of their own free will. The ESV CE says of their own accord so free will has been dropped in favor of accord. And there are a few differences here in um, Mark 13. I just want to point out here in the RSV 2 CE, uh, the desolating sacrifice, also known as the abomination of desolation, is referred to as an it. And then the RSV 2 CE uses him and him. Um, I think that's in a gender-inclusive way, using the grammatically masculine him, which includes women, if the context permits or implies, and then it says, alas, for those who are with child. Um, let's look to see what the RSV, has, uh, I'm sorry, the ESV CE has done with that. So the abomination of desolation is now a he. Um, he, who is on the housetop, becomes the one, so we get rid of he. Uh, again, here, this was he in the RSV. And then the word women is not in the text. There is an article that's feminine and plural, but um, the word women is not there. Well, so I had said earlier that the ESV is a bit more literal, and I wanted to give you an example of that uh, here in Matthew 9.10. Uh, and as he sat at table, this actually is uh, reclined rather than sat. And if you look at the ESV in this verse, you'll see that, in fact, that's what it says here. And as Jesus reclined at the table, so um, it turns out my example is a bit mixed, though, because even though the ESV correctly has reclined here, it substituted the proper name Jesus for the pronoun he. I want to give you a sample from the Deuterocanonical. So I have the RSV 2 CE on the right, the ESV CE on the left. Um, Book of Esther, Mordecai's Dream, this is chapter 1 in the ESV CE, chapter 11 in the RSV 2 CE. If you read them, they're pretty much the same. Uh, you get to verse 1c on the left, which is 4 on the right, and you see King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and you see Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, um, King Jeconiah of Judea, Judea, Jeconiah, King of Judea. So not very different at all. Well, in, in summary, I think it's uh, very well done. Uh, the only negative, the only criticism I have is the print quality. Um, it uh, is flexible. It opens well. Um, the print is a nice size. Uh, where it's dark, it's uh, very easy to read. And even where it's light, it isn't uh, especially troublesome. A bit lighter there on the left than I would like. It's still perfectly readable. Show through is not an issue. The paper is good. It has a good texture. It's not very, very uh, slick. Not a lot of shine to it. So from a reader's perspective, and I've read it quite a lot this past week, looking for those differences, I like it. I like it better than my 2016 Crossway or, uh, ESV. So um, I think it's quite good. I like the way the text does not go down into the gutter, and I certainly uh, would have no qualms in recommending this to anyone interested. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Augustan Bible.
in the uh, English Standard Version Catholic Edition. If you did, remember to hit the like button, um, share the video with your friends, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already.